How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode. We're idling out of Crocker on St. Clair right now and we're gonna go out there and do a how-to Great Lakes fishing. I know a lot of people don't think St. Clair's Great Lakes but it's actually considered a Great Lake. Nevertheless, these same procedures follow on these lakes whether it be Erie, Michigan, St. Clair, Huron. These fish all do the same thing so in this series I'm gonna fish today, tomorrow, and I'm gonna be filming all day, each day, and I know a lot of you guys are starting to travel up here and start to target these smallmouth, so I really felt that this was a uh, type of video that not a lot of videos on YouTube cover. There's not a lot of Great Lakes how-to smallmouth fishing. So today I'm gonna to show you what my standard you know, procedure is when I go out here. It's uh, August, so the fish are gonna be a little bit deeper. You know, in the springtime, of course, you're gonna be sight fishing, but we're not even gonna get into that. We're gonna show you how to go out there and find the fish with your electronics, find the uh, structure with your electronics, and uh, just go out there and have a lot of fun because these smallmouth are fun, and they're really not that hard to catch once you understand what they do. They're a lot different than largemouth, but uh, we're just gonna go out there. The water's real real blue and calm. We got about six miles an hour winds today, so we're gonna go have some fun. I gotta go out to the shipping channel now. I'll see you guys when we get there. about 15 to 16 feet of water. I'm gonna go ahead and idle over this spot that I've been catching these fish off, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I, what I look for and what I've been catching these fish off of. So this is what you wanna look for. I run side scan. I'm running 100 out in either direction. When you're on a great lake like this where there's no obstructions, no trees or docks or anything like that, you can even get away with greater than 100. You can maybe go 120, even 140. After that, you kind of lose resolution. Typically, I like 80 to 100 feet in either direction. That gives me a good wide spread. And I can, like I said, this is shooting out 100 feet in either direction. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spin around and show you how I mark this. So as we're coming by, we're gonna start seeing the rock. Notice there's nothing right here. We'll keep on going. Here's the waypoints, and if you look over here, these are where the rocks are. So, for example, here's a good one right here. I'll just click it, and then I'll hit the waypoint button, and a lot of times, whatever structure I think it is, is the symbol I use, and then that will appear right there on your chart, and you'll know exactly where to cast. And as you can see, all this rock right here that I just marked, it goes in line with where I've been fishing. So that is what those fish have been hanging on, is that hard spot right there. And it's really easy to find with your side sand because you can cover a greater amount of water as if opposed to whether you were shooting in just 2D like this. Because 2D, you're just shooting straight down. You're not covering as much water. As you can see out to my left, here's another good area with all these big boulders. There's a real good boulder right here. You can mark that. And then that's 198. If you go onto your graph, on my old processor load. There's 198, and that is pinpoint accuracy to where that big boulder is. So we can actually spin around, get upwind of that boulder, drop the trolling motor, and you'll know exactly where to cast. Throw in a smoke tube. Look at that fish. Just like we talked about, that spot is very small and it's just a little rock vein. But those smallmouth will sit on those rocks and, it, and the rest of the lake is featureless, so a lot of the crawls and everything will be in those rocks, which is why the smallmouth are there. So we can go ahead and get them. Mm -hmm. 
All right, everyone, so not a gigantic smallmouth, but about a 17, 17 and a half inch fish. Caught it on a smoke tube, like I was talking about, that rock vein. It's not a real big area, but it is just a little bit of a rock uh, spot. And, and when the rest of this area is featureless, I'm gonna go ahead and let this fish go. But when the rest of the area is featureless, and any of you who have fished St. Clair, a lot of this lake is just a flat, barren bottom. And if you can find a little bit of an irregularity, a lot of times that's hard surfaces, which is what we're talking about, rock. And the reason these smallmouth get on rock is because that's where all the goby, the perch, the crawls, that's where they all live. So of course the fish are going to migrate to the food, food source. And uh, I wasn't getting any bites on a drop shot really, which was interesting. And I switched to a tube and I started catching fish a lot more periodically. And the reason I believe that is just, just imitates either a goby or a crawl better. A lot of fish we were catching were spitting up crawls. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and idle back around because we already drifted off the spot, uh, get back on the waypoint, and hopefully the fish will still be there. Right on the spot where we just caught those other couple fish. As soon as you get back on that spot, it's like, Doop! there he is. They are hugging the bottom. It's about the same size. This school's about, you know, 17, maybe there's some 20 inch fish in this school, but they seem, like they're uh, grouping in size, but look at that fish fight. Pulling on. About a uh, 18 inch smallmouth I'd give it. Very nice fish and uh, fish are there. Let's go ahead and get back in there. Oh. There's another one off this spot. These fish are grouping by size right now. Most of them are about 17 to maybe 19 inches, about the biggest one we've caught out here. We're not filming every single one just because they are about the same size. Tomorrow we're gonna definitely not fish this area and we're gonna go out even into maybe 20 feet of water and see if we can get some big ones. But you know, catching fish like this, it's really fun. Let me see if I can get them in. Smallmouth just see the boat and they dig. Brown gold right here. Let's see if we can get him in. Caught this one on a drop shot. There he is. Gorgeous little fish right there. This is only a, about a 15, 16 inch smallmouth right here. Look at that. Octopus circle. It's actually what I'm using. Normally I use a split shot hook by Gamagatsu for my uh, drop shot hook, but they didn't have any in the store, so I bought these octopus circle, and it, it's not doing a bad job. It hooked it really well. That's what's left, left of my uh, Lunker City Ribsters with the worm I was using. Beautiful little bass. I'm gonna go ahead, take a picture, and let him go. Right off a little rock pile. See you later, girl. Woo! Now there's two approaches that I'm taking to uh, fishing this one is getting right over top of the waypoint and if the fish are off the bottom you can vertically drop down to them and watch your drop shot or your tube or whatever you're using go down to the mark and the fish will come up and eat it but these fish are hugging on the bottom these fish have their nose in these rocks eating these crawls I'm catching a ton of fish that are spinning up crawls really no bass that have shad or any type of bait fish in their mouth not really shad but uh you know, any type of the outwives or any bait fish right up here. I'm not really seeing that. I'm seeing a lot of bass that have crawls in them. I'm seeing they're real fat and they have some crawdad tentacles hanging out of their throat. So I know these fish are nose down. So basically the approach that I'm taking is I'm running upwind of these rocks and I'm just letting the wind drift me right over these spots. And as I'm doing that, I'm, you know, making slight adjustments with my trolling motor, make sure I run over the waypoints. But it's real effortlessly fishing. It's actually fun because you know, you, you're fishing open water, making casts, and uh, you're catching smallmouth. So that's how you do it, guys, if you're wondering. 
how to catch these summertime smallmouth. This technique will work across the uh, Great Lakes or even any other lakes for that matter. Fish are relating to structure and that is what we've been doing today and we've had decent luck. We haven't caught any big bass today but we've definitely caught a lot of quality smallmouth out here. Nothing to win any tournaments but uh, we've only been out here for a day so we haven't had a lot of time to find those big fish. So that's what we're doing right now folks. We're gonna go ahead and scan around a little bit more tonight, maybe go try a new spot and see if we can uh, get a little bit bigger bass. What's up everyone? Welcome back, it is day number two of our trip. We're getting ready to head out there. It's about 7.30 in the morning. We're gonna fish till about noon, maybe one o'clock if the fish are really biting today. But uh, we had a good day yesterday, like I said, we didn't catch any big ones. We caught like some four pounders, which is a decent fish, you know, it might get you a check here and there if you have a limit of four pounders. But, but today we're gonna go out and fish a uh, few different places. We're gonna go in a little bit deeper water, maybe up to 20, 21 feet of water. That's where I believe those big fish are right now. I think the bigger ones are pushed off. You can catch a bunch of three and a half fours and 15 to 16 feet. And occasionally you might be able to run into a big one, but the vast majority at this time of year, I know they go deep. So we're gonna go try that today. We might come up blank, we might come up a winner, who knows. There's only one way to find out. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying the video. Let's go ahead and get out in St. Clair. Alright everyone, got the first fish on the morning. Decent smallmouth. Came out here and I've been graphing some rocks out by the shipping channel. We're spitting distance to Canada. It's not a giant smallmouth, but it's not a bad one. Saw him on my depth finder drop down on a rock pile that I marked like I showed you guys yesterday right off that side scan. And your electronics are your tools. It's decent fish. Go ahead and get him in. Beautiful little fish, about a 17 inch smallmouth. Gonna go back to either the US or Canada, whatever he chooses. All right, everyone, so the rig that I'm using to catch that fish and what I'm using for drop shotting wise, I already showed you the tube that I was using. This is a Lunker City Ripster. This is a great little drop shot bait, especially for smallmouth because it imitates a lot of their forage. Uh, this is the Owlwife Glow Color. And as you can see, it has ribs on the bait, so it moves a lot of water and the tail is cupped so it has very good action on a drop shot fantastic drop shot weight i'm using eight pound fluorocarbon octopus circle hook and then on the bottom i'm using a crusher drop shot weight as you can see it has a little slant to it it's supposed to uh eliminate line twist i'm kind of testing it out this week and my line's staying actually really limp and limber and that's really important when you're fishing 20 25 feet deep because you want to have that good sensitivity so that's what i'm using if you're wondering about my rod my drop shot rod is a 6.8. This is a medium light Falcon. It's a perfect little drop shot rod, especially when you see them on the graph because you don't want like a 7.2, unless you're extremely tall, you know. But you want to have your uh, rod tip right past the trolling motor so you can see that uh, drop shot on your sonar. So we're going to go ahead and spin back around and fish that rock pile again. Hopefully there's like a 6 or 7 pounder on it. Let's go. Yeah, he's fine. Went back to that same rock pile I just got done. This is my next cast in. This one feels a lot bigger. Let's see what comes up. Woo! That's a tank. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Not down me yet. Going right down. He's giving me all kinds of wet. Should have had him right there. Put my hands on him. There he is. Booyah! Look at that right there, guys. Beautiful fish. Some point he got. He hurt his fin. That is a gorgeous black smallmouth on these rock piles i assume there's a lot more fish down there because i was two casts in a row i had a 17 inch fish and this one's about i'd give him 20 20 and a half inches so gorgeous fish we're gonna take a picture of this one i like that one i think that's picture worthy right there uh, i mean i was fishing where i've never fished on this lake before just trying to learn new spots i caught that one big fish i weighed him he's a bit a little bit over five pounds uh so that made the day worth it that made the trip worth it whenever you can catch a big smallmouth you know, it's always a good day. So I'm gonna go ahead and let him go. I got him in the live right here, just for some pictures. There he is. And uh, this fish came on a drop shot. Our best baits this trip have been drop shot in a tube. I've caught a few fish on swim baits off camera, but that is a black smallmouth, and he is a brute. Very fat and round. We're gonna go ahead and let him go right now. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time on Big Bass Master One. Close. There you go.